One of the most frustrating things that I come across in my career, uh, in my nursing career, is when there's a situation that I'm not sure what to do about. You know, there's a certain thing, a drug or a situation or I'm not sure how to approach something. And I ask somebody else's opinion, somebody that's been in the game maybe as long as me or even longer or even less. It doesn't really matter. I ask another person for an opinion. And some people have this... Uh, have this way of uh, really pissing me off. It's like, a, it's like something that really hits a button in me. And, and some people do this. Some people, instead of you know, going about the job and telling me what they think about the scenario or what we should be doing, they say something along the lines of, Ivan, how long have you been nursing? You should know this. Ivan, you should really know this. Know what? No, if I knew it, I wouldn't be asking you. But, you know, these people, what they don't understand is that that itself, that, that phrase, you should know this, how long have you been doing this, you should know this, is a culture killer. Because what that does is that it drives away the curiosity from everybody. And so what's going to happen next time, let's say, if I'm a weak character, if I come across a, a situation that's similar to that, perhaps I don't know how to do something else, I'm going to say, you know what, last time I got humiliated publicly. Uh, in front of some other people. So, you know what, I'm going to keep that to myself and I'll just, I'll just do whatever, whatever I reckon is, is the right thing to do. That right there is dangerous and is a culture killer across the whole team because people are going to be too embarrassed uh, to say, look, I don't know what's going on here. What do you reckon? When somebody asks me, hey, Ivan, man, you know, this is what's happening. I, I don't really know what to do. I don't go, ha ha, aren't you a dumb piece of shit? I don't do that, which is basically what people are saying when they say, Ivan, how long have you been nursing? Oh, you know, 15 years. You should really know this. Well, how long have you been walking the damn earth? Look at you, 350 pounder walking around. Do I laugh at you when you walk around here looking like that? No, everyone has something. that I, I'm better than you at squatting. How about that? How long have you been living on the earth? 40 years? You can't squat for shit. You don't even train. Look at you. You know, that would be really, really bad of me if I started belittling people that didn't train. Everybody out there does lots of different things, right? But when somebody comes to you and says, look, I, I need some assistance here, don't bloody laugh at them. Be happy that they're asking you for an opinion. If you know the answer, you know, be, be nice about it, right? In that same token, uh, I think a lot of people in the fitness industry uh, or the fitness journey or whatever, whatever the case might be. It doesn't even have to be fitness. When you've been in the game for, let's say, like 20 years, right? You're building cars for 20 years or you're squatting the bar for 20 years and you come across something, you're like, damn, I've just discovered something. And you say something and they're like, dude, I learned that like in the first day. You know, I learned that when, it was, when I was in my mom's womb. How do you not know that after 20 years of, of training? You know, one of these types of things that I'm going to say now, you know, a lot of you guys are going to be like, duh, but I'm going to say it anyway because it's profound for me right now. You know, I, I've learned lots of different things, but I'm, I'm going to say, uh, tell you something right now. It is amazing to me what effect the upper body has on the lower body when it comes to squatting and deadlifting. It is amazing to me. To this day, it is amazing to me. The point that I'm trying to make is that today I felt horribly weak. This is 220. I grabbed it for the first time and I was like, holy shit, this is really heavy. And I put it down, called it quits there. I'm not going to deadlift anymore. Put the straps back, walk away. And I'm like, damn, that felt heavy. So then obviously I go into a review process. Why the hell does that feel so heavy? And then I think about what I did yesterday. I did gazillion sets of rowing, chest supported row. I think it's called that uh, chest lever roll, incline lever roll. Did that for a whole bunch of sets. Uh, then I went over to some chest supported machine where I did underhand. Then I did overhand in another machine or like a neutral grip. So I did over, under and neutral grip. I did all of them for like five sets of 10 for each of these exercises. Today I come to the gym and everything feels heavy. Everything. Uh, you know, the deadly feels horribly heavy. You know, 220 for me, should be a walk in the park every day. If I choose to do 20, 220, I can do it every single day of the year. It is a small percentage of my max. Today felt horrible. 
because what I did with my back yesterday. Now, in the past, and this is one of those moments, Ivan, you should have known this, you know, uh, how long have you been training? You should know this. I learned this when I was in my mom's womb or my second day in the gym. Whatever, man. I'm just telling you what I what I have come up with, sharing my thoughts. Some of you guys might learn something. Some of you guys might shake your head at me. But this is a, a profound thing that I've learned. And I've talked about this in the past, but today was especially evident to me. I thought when I first started training that a deadlift is simply a hip extension, maybe a little bit of knee extension. It's hip extension. Everything else is just hanging on for dear life. What do the lats got to do with anything? What do traps got to do with anything? I can't visualize traps doing anything when you're, de when you're deadlifting. It's not like you are retracting your shoulder blades. They're just kind of already protract as soon as you start pulling and they just hang there off of whatever. They're getting stretched. It's not until you start training the hell out of your uh, lats and your traps and your rhomboids and all these pulling muscles of your upper back then you go, damn, that's something. I remember last year, probably halfway through last year, I did a, a session where I, I came in and I was uh, I was doing only lifting at the time or trying to pretend I'm doing only lifting. And, uh, you know, I wanted to warm up my shoulders. So I did a whole bunch of pull-ups and then I went in, into a snatch balance or whatever it's called. Uh, you know, I just tried to like overhead stuff and my shoulders kind of started feeling a little bit weird. So I thought doing pull-ups would be great. I did that, did some um, snatch balance, did overhead pre uh, uh, squats did some of that did some like i think i did some snatches with the empty bar or whatever anyway did all of that went over to the deadlift afterwards and i could not deadlift for shit my I, I could not contract my lats and because of that i couldn't deadlift at all like i stopped at 180 and i remember at that time i made a video and i said wow you do pull-ups before uh deadlift and the deadlift goes to shit um that's got nothing to do you know with uh quads hamstrings glutes core None of that th stuff gets really taxed when you're doing an over when you're doing a, a a lat pull down or a or a pull up a chin up something like that. But it is unbelievably impactful when it comes to the deadlift. So similar thing. Yesterday I did a whole lot of sets for my upper back. Today I feel weak, uh, especially off the floor, especially off the floor. As soon as I got the bar going to two twenty up to like maybe mid shin above mid shin. It felt like a 220. It started feeling easy, but the off the floor, I'm, I'm, I'm hypothesizing because of my lower back, uh, because of my upper back fatigue from yesterday, the off the ground strength went to shit. And so that is something we can take and move forward. Okay, Ivan, you're quite weak off the floor. You're also weak in the upper back. You can't row for shit. You can't pull up for shit. Hmm, isn't that a common denominator? Uh, this is one of these things that. A lot of you guys are going to be like, of course, dude, of course, of course, of course. And I've heard a lot of these uh, types of comments. You know, you got to do pull-ups uh, if you want to do, be really good at deadlifting. Okay, that, that kind of makes sense, but I never really felt it. I never really, really, really felt the impact of that until I started experimenting. And then today was another one of these profound feelings like, wow, lats are huge when it comes to deadlifting. Huge. Traps are huge when it comes to deadlifting. Felt really weak. And then I went over to the squats and the squats felt crap as well. Why would the squats feel crap? Well, the damn thing is resting on your traps. So if you have poor thoracic, you know, stability because you've taxed the hell out of it from all the rowing and the pull-upping, you're not going to have strength in the squat either because that's instability. You're leaking power there. And the system can, can detect that really, really well. And it'll just bleed all that power out. And then what, what then? You know, the central nervous system will see that and be like, okay, this is not our day. You know, deregulate the central nervous system. And then you, the muscles that are fresh and ready to go, I'm not going to fire properly because there's no stability in the system from all the muscles that are fatigued, which are usually there to support. And let's say lats and traps are not your main movers in a deadlift, but they're certainly stabilizers. They're certainly synergistic muscles, which are keeping that upper body uh, rigid, that are transferring force from the lower to body to the upper body and into the bar. You fatigue all of those things, you have a cannon on a canoe. That old saying, you can't fire it, man. The moment it fires, the canoe goes one way and the ball just drops like a meter in front of you into the water. So it's kind of uh, one of these situations. And now I'm kind of thinking to myself because I'm doing so much volume of this pulling. I'm like, I really got to think about where I'm going to put my good mornings, where I'm going to put my 
heavy front squat sessions, where I'm going to put my deadlift sessions, because they need to be far, far away from all the back work if I want to feel strong, um, if I want to exhibit, you know, 90% up type of weight. Uh, so I'm thinking to myself, okay, whatever days I'm doing pulling, one or two days before that, I should do deadlift. So then I wait a whole week of recovery until the next time I do deadlifting. And then straight after the deadlift session, the following day, I can do my back again, smash it, wait another six days, and I'll be recovered by then. It's one of these things that's like, you know, uh, you know, in, in your mind, you know, you're thinking to yourself, you, you should know that. Uh, but you don't really know that until you're testing it and you're feeling it and you understand that these muscles uh, n are not prime movers. But my God, are they important. I think we obsess over the prime movers. Oh, the deadlift is uh, hamstrings, glutes, let's say adductors, quads initially, maybe a little bit. The angle is, you know, you're, you're doing some sort of pushing initially. That's so well and good. Okay, no worries. Lower back makes sense. Core makes sense. Transverse abdominis, erectus abdominis, all of, uh, uh, erectus mm -hmm. abdominis, all of these things make sense. They're kind of involved in the whole hip structure, extending the hip. But lats? <laughs> you know, I think that as you mature, as you move forward as a lifter, you, you start to realize that stabilizers are just as important. The differential, the transmission, the tires, the brakes, the control arms of your car, of your race car, are just as important as that figure that the engine spits out. It's useless if you don't have stability. It is useless if you don't have traction in that car. You could have 2,000 horsepower. You're not going to win any race, man. You need the other stuff. And I think as you mature, you start to appreciate doing a bit of planks, doing a bit of sit-ups, hanging uh, leg raises are just as important as doing the, the, those squats reps and those deadlift reps and those bench press and all these other things. That's what separates the really strong people because they can transfer that power from the movers into the bar. Without the stabilizers, that power is going to leak everywhere. You're going to be spinning your tires, you know, sliding all around the place. You're going to be snaking down the road. That's ineffective and the loss of power. The stabilizers are crucial. Appreciate you guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.